In this video, we'll be looking at using Maya, Photoshop, and Substance Painter to create and use an ID map for texturing your models. To begin with, we'll be taking a look at our UVs, making sure they're laid out as, as we want and in a way that makes sense to us. And then we'll be using the UV snapshot command. You can use that through the camera icon here, or you can go to image and UV snapshot at the bottom of that menu. First, you'll want to choose where you save the UV map to and you'll be choosing a name for your UV map. The next thing you'll be doing is choosing the image format. I'm going to be using a PNG. You want something with a transparent background. Now you can choose the size of that map. That will usually depend on the size of the final texture you want to create. I'm going to leave mine at 2K resolution here, 2048 by 2048. Then we'll choose the edge color. So there you can choose what color um, the edges will be in uh, Photoshop when we bring it in. I'm going to pull that slider down to black. You can also use the color pick tool there. Hit apply and close and then open your UV map in Photoshop. So the first thing that you'll notice about your UV map is it's very difficult to see with the transparent square grid in the background. So what we're going to do is create a new layer, drag that below the um, first layer, name that BG or background, and then use your paint bucket tool here to fill white in the background or just the color that's going to stand out well. If you still can't see your UVs very well, I'm just going to name the, rename this UV. Um, what you might want to do is duplicate this layer by pressing Ctrl and J or right clicking and duplicating. You can duplicate that a couple of times till the lines become darker. And then by holding Shift, select all your layers and Ctrl E or right click and merge will merge those layers together. Next, check your concept art to find out how many materials you're going to have attached to your object. So here I'm going to have four, the steel blade uh, the, and the different parts uh, that make up the handguard. Now our ID map simply helps separate these different materials from each other. They're all actually attached into one material whenever you bring them into your game engine. So this is a way of telling Substance Painter that these four are to be kept separate in some way and it helps us to apply textures easy. You'll see whenever we get to the Substance Painter stage. So for the blade, I'm gonna go with this blue color. For the handguard, I'm gonna go with the green. For the grip, I'm gonna go with this red for the dark leather. And then for the age, age bronze, there's some little rings there. I'm gonna go with this yellow color. These colors aren't related to the materials themselves or the color, the final colors. They're just different from each other to differentiate the, the various parts of the model. So let's take the blade first, which I'm going to color designate with this blue ID. I'm going to color pick that blue using I or the eyedropper tool here and go across into my UVs, create a new layer and I'm going to call that um, blade. Then I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool, or you could use a brush to mark out the areas that the blade um, takes up on this map. So all of my blade is in this area here, and I'm going to use my brush to fill in that area. And then Control D to deselect that lasso selection. Next, I have the iron hand guard, which I've designated with this green. So I'm going to use a green color. It could be any green color, but I'm just going to color pick this for handiness. Pop back in again, use my polygonal lasso tool to select those parts of that make up the handguard. Okay, and then I'm gonna again use my brush to paint that in. Now, make sure this is on a different layer, we'll just make it easy for you. So I'm gonna call this uh, handguard, paint that in, control D to deselect, L again to select the polygonal lasso tool, and then I'm gonna select all the rest of the parts that make up that handguard. Finally, I'm going to mark red for this leather and anything that would be these little uh, age bronze rings, they're going to be yellow. So now you can see that every object that's been UV mapped has a color associated with it. And that is the ID, which is going to tell it to apply a material to all of those things at once. We can leave the background white or black or whatever color, but what I like to do is go to the bottom uh, layer and just paint the rest of it in that color to make it um, a little clearer what's what. So it's time to export our model as an FBX from Maya to export this uh, ID map. Now you always hide your UVs, otherwise you'll have these lines built into your ID map, which you don't want. So hide your UVs there, and this is your ID map finished. Doesn't look like much, but will be very, very helpful in the long run. So go ahead and save this out as a PNG and bring it into Substance Painter. File, export, quick export as PNG will work well. I'm gonna call mine greatsword underscore ID and then save. So this is my Substance Painter project. I'm going to go to File, Import Resources, Add Resources, and I'm gonna find that ID map. 
select your map and hit open. Then where it says undefined beside that map that you selected, I'm going to select that and I'm going to call it a texture. Okay. Because essentially that's what it is. It's a texture map. We're going to import the resources to the current project here and hit import. Now to use this ID map, we have to select it. On the right hand side, you'll see your texture set settings. And if you scroll down here, there is the mesh maps, which we still need to bake out. So before we bake our mesh maps, let's select our ID map, which we've just imported. And you'll see within the project, it's already selected there. Here you could search for the name and it should bring that up. So now that map is attached to my object. Now it may not look like it, but if you want to check that that's worked, you can scroll down here to ID on the mesh maps. Here we can see the work that we've done in Photoshop applied to our model. And this is going to tell Substance Painter how to apply our smart materials to the surface of our model. So if I hold control and drag one of these materials or smart materials out, it will apply it only onto only surfaces of the same color that are marked on my ID map. So let's see that in action. I'm going to select my material view again. I'm going to bake out my mesh maps quickly. Deselecting the ones I don't want to bake, like the normal map, the ID map, and the uh, thickness map, and baking the rest, like the ambient occlusion in there. Bake selected textures and let that load out. So now you can see the list of those textures we baked alongside our ID map. Just makes everything look a wee bit prettier, and the curvature map will help with uh, displaying these smart materials. So let's get to applying these to our model using the ID map. So I'll start with the leather. Here's a leather texture that I like. Rather than clicking and dragging this on and applying it to the whole model and needing to manually create masks, I can just hold control, drag that over onto the leather and you see it automatically brings up the ID mask. So I can drag this onto my 2D map or my 3D map and let go over the leather and it will automatically mask off. You see it's created a black mask here beside my layer and it's automatically masked off everything else and just applied it to the surface that I want it applied to. So again, for my handguard and pommel, I can hold control and drag that onto part of the green and it will apply it to everything that I have marked as green. Again, for the bronze rings here, I'm going to drag that on to my texture map. Now for the blade, I'll just demonstrate another way of applying this. It's a wee bit more um, complex, but can uh, be used in different circumstances. If I apply the steel here for the blade to the entire surface, the way we normally would, and then go and add a black mask, Okay, normally what we do is go and use our uh, polygon fill tool here to select the parts that we want to um, unmask again to paint white on this mask. But what we can do is um, click this little wand button here and we're going to add a color selection. Then you'll see down in your color selection properties here, there's a colors tab and it says pick color. And then from there you can pick your blue steel and you'll see that there's the color that's been selected is this blue. So that's basically how your ID map works is it looks at that color and it assigns that material um, to only that color based on the masking system within Substance Painter. Sometimes you'll have made a mistake with your color ID map. Like you can see here on Photoshop, my original concept art shows that there is this iron in the middle of the bronze and also the bronze is on this little bit above the pommel here. But if I pop back into Substance Painter, you can see that I have colored that wrong because this should be iron and this little bit here should be bronze. So if you haven't made a mistake with your ID map, you will have to go back into Photoshop and fix those changes and export it again as a PNG and then bring it back in using the file and import resources command. I just named it the same thing and I'm bringing that back in as a texture imported to the project PBR Metal Roughness setting here and you see that it has hopefully updated that um, texture map. I just need to go back into my texture set settings, select my ID map and then select that updated uh, map there and it will refresh it and I can see now that everything is applied exactly as it was in the original concept. Another thing if you get uh, lost while you're creating your ID map in Photoshop as to what part is which with this uh, ID map here, uh, remember you can jump back into Maya and just double check what each part of this uh, refers to by having your UV window open, right clicking and going to say face selection and then you can hover over the faces so that if you're wondering you know what, what this is you can double click that or you can even select it in UV shell and then it'll show up on your model. Okay so it's important to kind of work back and forwards to work out what bit is what because often your UV layout is not as clear as you thought it was whenever you export that snapshot into Photoshop. So that's it for this video, a super handy way of marking materials and very quickly being able to texture stuff up in Substance Painter once you uh, export your model and create that little ID map from Photoshop.